Public education is at the heart of everything we hope to achieve in our state. And teachers are at the heart of public education. I'm also proud of our long work and association together, defending Oregon, our schools, and your profession against those who are hostile to teachers, to public schools, and to the right of collective bargaining. As you, most of you know, I was first elected governor in 1994, running against the Republican tide that swept the nation. The Republicans took control of both houses of the legislature and maintained that control during my entire eight years as governor. During that time, I was a staunch defender of public education and Oregon teachers, which was an especially challenging task given the fact that the legislative leadership was hostile to both. I repeatedly fended off efforts to divert public dollars into private schools and block numerous attacks on teachers and education budgets. And working closely with the OEA and other unions, I was the single most visible opponent of Bill Sizemore during the 1990s, debating him on numerous times on numerous ballot measures. And I also put together the largest business labor coalition in Oregon's history to fight measures 8, 91, and 93, the first campaign to take on the name Our Oregon. Now, that's part of the history. Part of the history that I share with this organization and with Oregon teachers. I know you and you know me. And I have the deepest respect for the hard work that you and your colleagues do day in and day out to prepare our children for the future. Work that is made even more difficult by the fact that our public schools don't have the resources they need to do the job. The second misperception is that the funding problem is due to the health care benefits that school employees receive. Well, health care is expensive. But that's the fault of the health care system, not the fault of teachers or anybody else who's bargained away a wage increase to pay the skyrocketing cost of health insurance. The solution for a high health insurance cost for schools isn't to beat up teachers, it's to reduce the cost of health care, which is another one of my priorities. Another misconception is that the way to fix what's wrong with education is to simply make it easier to fire teachers. Well, the truth, of course, is that there are a few bad teachers, just as there are a few bad doctors. But the key to improving education isn't to focus on the few, it's to find ways to create conditions to help the vast majority of teachers who are dedicated to their jobs and working hard to do the very best they can. I'm talking about simplifying the assessment process, not making it more complicated, because at the end of the day, we need to liberate teachers from the onerous burden of measuring and testing and give them more time for preparation and teaching and innovation and professional development. <laughs> Public education is the only thing that can pull us out. I want your endorsement, of course, but more than that, I want your partnership to reclaim the narrative on change and reform put yourselves back in the driver's seat to create the kind of schools we need to secure our future. I need you. Oregon needs you. Oregon's children need you. Thank you very much. I'd like for you to describe um, your plan for revenue reform. The, the issue of financing public education and the issue of ensuring all our kids have the educational foundation to thrive and succeed in the 21st century is inextricably intertwined with reform of the public finance system. The reason that we have had the inability to provide long-term stable funding for schools is because of our heavy reliance on the income tax, which is extraordinarily volatile. So every time the, uh, revenue, the uh, economy takes a tick, we withdraw resources from where they need to be the most. Next session, the spearhead of this effort has to start with reforming the 2% kicker, creating a robust, a well-capitalized emergency reserve fund that will give us the uh, ability to smooth out our revenue system as long as we have this reliance on the income tax. And the next step we have to take beyond that is to try to reduce our reliance on the income tax. And one of the issues that has to be on the table is the retail sales tax. Now, I have gone up that hill a couple of times before, but the fact of the matter is, as long as we continue to rely on personal and corporate income taxes to finance our school system, we are going to continue to see this boom-bust cycle. Now, getting that done is going to be tough because it's in the Constitution, which means we're going to have to recreate a political center in the state of Oregon. You can't do this with Democrats alone or Republicans alone. We have to do it as Oregonians. 
And the top priority of the next administration has to be to recreate that political center around creating a more stable revenue system to finance education and workforce development in the state of Oregon. I will say just in, in addition that the two sales tax campaigns I've been involved with, or rev big revenue reform campaigns I've been, uh, I've been involved with, were really discussions about a tax. There was no context. I believe today, unlike in 1990 and certainly 1985, following this recession, we can make a very cogent argument that the reason Oregon's per capita income has drifted below the national average, the reason we can't provide long-term stable funding for our schools, is because of our narrow reliance on the income tax. And if we want to address either of those things, not only do we have to create a functional emergency reserve fund, we have to have the courage to step up and figure out how to reduce our reliance on the most volatile tax that we could possibly have. And education is too important to be funded in that way.